I am seeing some pretty standard builds for what we've been seeing in the tournament so far. Dual Kodiak 3s on both sides. It is probably the most powerful mech in the game, and we've been seeing it in almost every single drop without fail. Dual gra uh, Grasshoppers on Storm Jaguar's side, and we do see a Grasshopper and Timberwolf for the heavies on the Night Scorn side. Dual Hunchback 2Cs for Storm Jags, that's another very popular mech. And a Hunchback 2C and a Blackjack Arrow, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, definitely Nightscore. not something you see every day. On the light side, dual gender 2Cs for both teams, and of course it is the, I believe, the SRM variant. Uh, very popular choice so far. So, similar decks, definitely using some of the top meta right now, and we'll have to see what these guys can can do here. So we are heading in right now for our first match of the day, Night Scorn versus Storm Jaguar. Let's see what these guys can bring to the table. Who do you uh, who do you think is going to fare the best in this matchup? You know, I'm so excited to see this because of the fact that we have Night Scorn, a very well established Div B MRBC team, uh, very good solid team versus a combo team, and we've seen some good combo teams before, and we've seen some not so good combo teams. It can be hard to take two top level teams, which is what this is, a combination of Seraphim Rising Storm and Steel Jaguar, and bring them together where all the personalities kind of mesh and they're used to the drop call, but it can also be a very good thing, taking the best of, of pilots from two different teams. So we'll we'll have to see. I think Storm Jaguar has the upper hand just based off the pilot list. But again, is that chemistry going to change how this match plays out? I don't know. Night Scorn heading up into the D4 region with three of their mechs to get some Overwatch looking across the way. They actually kept some of their mechs back. Storm Jaguar is not threatening the Epsilon Corner. They did send one general over there to take a look, but they are actually operating in the opposite side of the map here. So we have uh, a little bit of a poke fest with longer range lasers in these grasshoppers trying to get their shots across the way as best as they possibly can. So, so far some pretty good opening trades from Storm Jaguar onto the Night Scorn Kodiaks. Um, the Jenner 2C actually has taken the most damage. Well, actually, yeah, both Jenners have taken the most damage. So as they're going around and getting some scouting information, they've actually taken a lot of hits from this Overwatch. And, yeah, and uh, these Kodiaks are taking a lot of damage right now from uh, Storm Jaguar. They're just not getting good return fire ooh, good running dual there. PPC, dual Goss. We do have an exchange of artillery, actually air strikes air going strikes, back and yep. forth. I believe Vorpal Sword did get uh, contacted by the strike coming across, and there was a slick dodge here on the opposite side where they sidestepped it. So we've got smokes going back and forth, and uh, they're really just trying to wear each other down right now. Stealth Raptor down Stealth to Raptor 69 is in a lot percent. Of trouble. His he is not is winning open. these trades at all, and I think he needs to identify that. If we take a look at his paper doll right lost, now, yeah, his as well. right he's, torso. He's really that was actually a crit Goss, I believe, in that right torso. So losing that Goss, it is a high crit rate, and when it explodes, it nearly takes the component all the way off. So that's uh, that's where most of that damage came from. Is actually a lucky crit roll for Storm Jaguar, and he's got to be uh, kind of cursing himself for that peak there. Yeah, and I was spectating him a little bit. He was not doing a great job with those trades. Seemed like he was getting the lesser of the deal there against a Grasshopper on the other side. Really uh, was able to pin him down and just couldn't get some effective return fire. Now, knowing that that right shoulder, which just did get taken off the rest of the way, and he did lose his PPCs now because of that, he was doing a good job protecting that right shoulder as he was traversing across, but I think a lot of people forget that there is a second level you can jump down yep. to to avoid taking any additional damage. So that And Waka's being very aggressive right now on the Hunchback 2C, charging into Theta across the open ground. It hasn't taken a lot of damage from it. They, you know, I believe they identified that Night Scorn has dropped down now, and they are kind of moving into a new position. And that is actually the perfect time for Storm Dragar to move up and gain some ground. That's why he was able to get up there and get away with it. And they're bringing their Absolutely. large pulse lasers to bear within their optimal range. And anything that peaks, including this Timberwolf, is getting punished hard. This is really not looking good for Night Scorn. They are just not getting uh, their trades downfield and and they're spending a lot yeah. of time moving around and not accomplishing much and I really think it is just a discrepancy between the two decks um, Storm Jaguar and they do and just the take out kill. the first kill the uh, Grasshopper ga Gas Guzzler has gone down um, and, you know, the other thing I want to point out here is they're playing a, tr a, a poke strategy against Storm Jaguar they're playing 
a more individual skill based strategy against in a here. team that is basically an individual skill team. And I was wrong in the initial assessment of the deck. It actually, the Jenner 2CA is the laser variant. So neither teams brought the SRM brawlers for this. They have been opting for the uh, the longer range ER medium lasers. And these two Kodiaks are about to get jumped on. There's a hard presence on the left. Storm Jaguar has completely split in half and they are pincering Night Scorn and th things are looking really hopeless with yeah. this positioning. They're gonna jump on him and they're gonna finish him off right here. We Some do have great trades by light Wonka there. here in the Hunchback 2C. Yeah, doing this a great is, job keeping pressure on. This is uh, this is inevitably going in favor of Storm Jaguar. The damage is just too much to bear for Night Scorn, and they are going to go down systematically here as Storm Jaguar moves in for the kill. And that was an extremely, extremely one-sided match. Um, Absolutely. I was hoping that Night Scorn would be able to to get some ground, but I think Storm Jaguar just played this perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. I know these two teams have been scrimming each other, and Tear Seal does go down, so it won't be a perfect 8-0 or anything like that, but I believe these two teams have been scrimmaging each other. They're very familiar with each other, and yep. uh, I guess Storm Jaguar just was able to adapt the best and really just bring it to them. And again, I don't know if I agree with the, the pre-match decisions by Night Scorn. We all know that Storm Jaguar is a combo team. Night Scorn is a team that's been playing together for a long time. What I would have done against a combo team where you know they're bringing the best pilots from two different teams is play a brawl deck. Use your your advantage should be in the cohesion between your players, the chemistry you have as a team. A brawl deck relies on that chemistry, that focus fire. A poke deck relies on individual skill, ability to make better trades, to get your shots on target, to peak tighter than the other team's players. They played right into Storm Jaguar's hands with that drop deck. I don't think that was the right decision for them. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you, uh, and hopefully they can look at this and try and figure out what's going on. I know Night Scorn is a very talented team, but right now they just do not seem to be meshing together properly, and uh, they hopefully have not uh, lost too many high-profile matches that they've... A, you know, have might it might have worked themselves out of the standings. There still is a lot of games left to play, and I know that if they bring it together and just do their best to try and figure out what's going wrong and start playing tighter, I think they can still pull this off. But right now, it seems to be like they're going to be pulling from behind. Now, it is a little unfair that we've been showcasing them, and all three times that we showcased them, they have lost. Those were very high-profile matches against some Absolutely. very, very talented teams. So, Night Scorn is still going to do well, but it's these matches against teams that I, I would consider their equals that yeah. are, are incredibly important to their overall standings. And I think they know that, and they're going to have to just try and do their best to uh, to pull that together, camera stuff. So let's uh, let's go take a look at the map here real quick and see the strategy. I have seen this used a couple times in the past. Here, we had the initial movement to D4 for about three of their max. I believe it was the Kodiaks and one yep. of the other max. Bravo Lance moving up just up top here, and they had General Overwatch over Theta. Team two which is Storm Jaguar, immediately sent their guys up top and uh, on the opposite side here. I don't think they were necessarily all the way back by Kappa, but they immediately went for the Sigma Kappa lances, and essentially they were just trading through Theta really effectively at these angles, just landing their shots very well. Now, you, Clan La Large Pulse with those Hunchback, uh, hunchback uh, 2Cs, I believe is a 600 meter optimal range for the large pulse lasers so those hunchbacks really fit this map very well um aiming across that yeah, distance absolutely. it may not always be in their optimal but you can't really see it here but these squares are 500 meters each so they're firing across the thousand meter gap that means with large pulse lasers that they're still doing at least some damage to their opponent and as they move a little bit closer as they did they moved up into that theta range they're doing full damage on their target consistently and and it's a very very good mech choice it's a it's a fantastic choice did you get a chance to see at all what build the arch or the arrow was running you know i uh i should have done that and i didn't to be honest i was so focused on how good of a job wonka was doing in that hunchback 2c that i 
kind of got absorbed in just watching the <laughs> trades. They were really good. <laughs> yeah, they were fantastic, and that it, it's disheartening seeing those crits like on that on that Kodiak. Yeah. It was a very surgical shot into that shoulder. Barely any part of that mech was really damaged except for that Gauss shoulder. Now he had taken that... some substantial damage to the armor beforehand, so that crit was not he a did. one shot crit. It no, had been a no, couple no, no. shots. And but that because the rest of his armor was in relatively decent shape. It's, it, it just goes to show how surgical that attempt was to take that shoulder off. That was intentional, and no, the crit absolutely. the crit was a bonus. The crit was definitely a bonus. Taking that Gauss rifle out and causing that crit to happen, uh, it was definitely a, a bonus for them um, because it takes the PPC off. And that Kodiak has lost significant uh, firepower losing a Gauss and a PPC like that. Uh, but really, that. It was very surgical, that, that shot and the, the attempt to take that shoulder off. It was fantastic. But the Kodiak needed to do a better job protecting himself in a poke situation. And I'm not sure how well um, he, he was opting to do a side peek. He had a mountain in front of him, and he was peeking yeah. off to the right. I don't think that that fits the strengths of the Kodiak. Uh, he had an arm PPC. He had a shoulder goss, and that's cool. Uh, but I think he was putting too much stock in the PPC, and and I'm not sure if side peeking in a Kodiak is the best choice when it's got such high ballistic mounts. They should be focusing more on peeking up over hills, and that right shoulder was the first thing out every single time, besides the arm, of course, and I think that's Absolutely. why they were able to surgically remove that shoulder so easily. It really is on that pilot to not allow himself to get shot that often, and it allowed that crit to happen because of it. He did good, do a good job trying to protect his shoulder in in the uh, the movement call, but even still, he was behind cover. He could have just backed up, dropped down to the next level, and moved on. And even with a crit shoulder, he still would have had the additional weapon in the arm, and he still would have been able to bring that to bear. But he opted to just walk across open terrain, and even if he was protecting it with his large left arm, Ultimately, a lucky shot got passed and still took that shoulder off. It didn't need to happen. It did not need to happen. I just feel like that was that was sloppy, and I think that they just need to look back at it and say, how can we, as individual pilots, bring more to the table? Now, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that Kodiak because he was the one that I was looking at the most. Yeah, and the initial damage went to that Kodiak. But, uh, but yeah, I got into a little bit of a tear there with the map up, so everyone's looking at my arm hanging over here, but... I, I just <laughs> felt like that kind of needed to be said is, is, you know, it, in like, just like you said, in poke decks, it really does come down to individual skill. Not, not saying that that pilot is bad or anything like that. He just needs to figure out, um, you know, figure out what went wrong and, and try and improve. So after that initial movement, we did see a drop down to the second level and then essentially a s stagnation yeah. right in this area here for Night Scorn. At that point, they were so hurt and they weren't trading very well that there really wasn't anything left for them to do besides just try and get some shots downfield. And there's a couple of faster field. mechs, the Hunchbacks, and I believe one other mech did a great job pushing up towards Epsilon for, from Delta Three all the way into Epsilon uh, for Storm Jaguar and just putting some more pressure on while the rest of their team kind of sat back still in that Charlie Three area and just... It, at that point, the damage was way in Storm Jaguar's favor. The angles were in their favor. The position was in their favor. And the game, obviously, also in their favor. Yep. So then they hit him from two sides and were able to just pincer him. And that was a very slick move by Storm Jaguar. I think that the only thing that could have possibly saved Night Scorn at that point is realizing that there was such a drastic split between the two teams and maybe do a hard push in one direction yeah, to take one of push. them out. But it, it seemed like they kind of conceded defeat at that point and just and just waited for it to come to them, and, and it did. So Yep, absolutely. Well played by Storm Jaguar, though. They, they definitely played a very clean match. Can't take that away from them at all. They did, did uh, very well, and I'm excited to see what those guys are able to do as a combo team in this tournament. Uh, combo teams do sometimes do well because you can put a lot of really good pilots together. The same token, combo teams mean you have multiple leaderships together 
you know, it, we even played in the combo teams a team ourselves, so we have a little bit yep. of experience with that, uh, operating with Isengrim and Antares Scorpions as a unit, and it was fun. It was definitely fun, but there's there's always that, uh, like, try leadership thing where, you know, there's disagreements or maybe the way somebody has a place, the, the play styles don't always mesh. You don't necessarily grow up together, so... Um, it's going to be cool to see what these guys can do and how far they can reach in the qualifiers here. I would yeah, I be tickled like pink to, to see a see combo team it. make it into the regional finals. So we're going to head into the break now, and uh, we will see you guys again for our next match, which should be the Wild Bunch versus Mech Rangers. See you guys then.